Welcome to day number eight of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to 3D model a doorstop. You'll learn how to use the box feature, the cylinder feature, the chamfer tool, two tangent circle feature, how to create construction lines, and the draft feature. So to get started, we'll create a simple box using the box feature, which essentially saves us the step of having to create a rectangle sketch that would be extruded anyway. Now the box feature can be found under the create menu. After selecting it, you'll be prompted to select a plane. So we'll select the top plane and click on our center origin and drag it out. We'll type in 1.8 inches for the width and five inches for the length. After hitting enter, you'll notice it's already created a box and we can simply increase or decrease the height with the arrow or by typing in the exact dimensions. For the height, I'll enter only 0.2 inches because the draft feature will create the rest of our thickness later on. Now we'll use the cylinder feature under the create menu. Select the top of the box that we just created and then we'll select the midpoint here. You should see a triangle anytime that a feature can snap to the midpoint of a line or plane. So I'll click on the midpoint and then I'll just click on the edge of our box giving it the same width. And once again I'll use the thickness of 0.2 inches but this time I'll have to make sure that I'm heading in the same direction as the box and I'll make sure the operation is set to join before clicking OK. Now that we have our basic shape down, we're going to use the draft feature to create the angled surface of the doorstop. When we activate the draft feature from the modify dropdown list, we'll be prompted to select the plane in which we'll select the front here, and then we'll select the top face for the faces selection. So if you see this dotted line here, that is the point in which the draft angle pivots. So if I take this slider and drag it to about 9 degrees, then we'll get the basic shape of the doorstop. Now, after clicking OK, we'll want to add a few things to make this doorstop work a little bit better. The first thing I'm going to do is add a chamfer to the front of it. In previous lessons, we used the fillet tool, which creates rounded or filleted edges. On the other hand, the chamfer tool creates beveled or chamfered edges. Now after selecting chamfer from the modified drop-down list, I can select the front line of the doorstop and type in 0.2 inches, which was our thickness. You'll see that immediately after I type in the dimension, it applied a beveled edge to the front. Now we'll use the view cube to take a look at the bottom. And we'll use the shell feature from the modified drop-down list to hollow out the body, making it more realistic like this were some sort of injection molded plastic or rubber. Now after activating the shell command, I'll select the bottom face and I'll enter 0.1 inches for the thickness. The next thing I want to do is add a fillet or rounded edge around the top surface so the doorstop doesn't have any sharp edges. I'll call the fillet command with the keyboard shortcut letter F and I'll select the top four lines and type in 0.08 inches. Lastly, I would like to add some rubber grips to the top surface of the doorstop so a heavy door doesn't slide away from it. To start off, I'm going to create a new rectangle and I'll click on the top surface here. I'm going to make the rectangle 0.1 inches wide and I'm just going to drag way past the top here because I'll round out the top in a minute. Now I'm going to hit the escape key to escape the rectangle command, and then I'll hit letter C, the keyboard shortcut for center circle. I'll hit letter T, the keyboard shortcut for trim, and then I'll select the two lines to get them out of the way and clean up my sketch a bit. Now I'm going to use the rectangular pattern sketch tool to create four total grips and I'm only going to have them take over half the space because I'm going to use the mirror feature to create the rest in just a minute. I'm going to select all the lines in the circle here and then I'll type in 0.6 inches for the distance and four for the number of times to copy. 
So before we mirror these over to the other side, I would like to round over the top of each rectangle. To do this, I'll use the two tangent circle sketch tool. Now after activating it, I'll simply click on one line followed by the other. Then I'll repeat this step for the other three rectangles. Now before I extrude these rubber grips, I'll have to copy them over with the mirror feature. First, I'll need to create a center line that the mirror feature can reference. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut letter L to draw the line directly in the center. And anytime we add lines that are solely for reference purposes, we'll want to select the line and hit letter X on the keyboard, which is the shortcut that turns the line into a construction line. So construction line is only used for reference purposes. Now after selecting the mirror feature from the sketch dropdown list, I can simply click and drag completely over the sketch items here, which will select it all for me. Then I'll select the mirror line selector and click on the construction line that we just created. Now after exiting the mirror command by clicking OK, I'll activate the extrude command with letter E, and then I'll select all of the rounded rectangles that I've created. And because we didn't trim out the top circles, I'll have to select those separately. Now normally, I would have trimmed those out, but I wanted to reinforce why we actually use the trim feature on the bottom here. Next, I'll extrude these up 0 0.05 inches, and then I'll activate the fillet command with the keyboard shortcut letter F. And I'll round over all these edges 0 0.04 inches. And last but not least, I'll just throw a simple rubber material on here by right clicking and selecting Edit Appearance. And I'll double click on the material to change the color to a light brown. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button below if you learned something in this video. And click subscribe to be notified of the next video where I'll show you how to 3D model a light bulb using the sphere tool.